Well, hello and welcome to another one of my vlogs. Thank you so much for joining with me. As you can see, Milo is enjoying himself in a little stream here. And he's really enjoying it because it is a warm day and he hasn't found anywhere else where he's been able to enjoy that. Thank you, Milo, for that. Now I'm a little bit fresher myself. And I brought along with me plenty of water, so he's been drinking that as we've been traveling along. Uh, but uh, he certainly enjoyed his little swim uh, out here in the countryside. And as I just think about water today, it's really important for us in our world as the reserves of water are uh, getting uh, more and more precious. And for the first time in the United Kingdom's history and in the history of England, temperatures this summer have gone over a, 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 a bar of 40 degrees Celsius. And for us in England, that's uh, record breaking. First time that's ever happened. And it's been very warm. Uh, but not only just warm, it's been very dry. And we haven't had hardly any rain for nearly two months. And that's really serious for us and for many other places in the world, of course, where water is, is short. And I want to talk to you today about a story involving Jesus and a woman that he met at a well. Wells were place of meetings for people in the ancient world, and that's still the case today. Uh, some years ago, in 2016, uh, we had the privilege of going to India, a group of us from the church at Hadley, and we were able to open up a well and to open up a church building and a building where a church leader was going to live and it was a tremendous privilege because we were opening those facilities up for a community that had never ever had fresh water before so a well for them was absolutely transformational and wells still today in places like India in the rural areas especially are places where people would congregate, where they'll meet and they'll talk and they'll gather together and they'll go to collect their water. Some would have to travel uh, many miles in order to even do that. And in this story, Jesus met with this woman at midday. Now, that was unusual in itself because most people would go when it was cool in the day, either first thing in the morning or last thing at night, uh, because to carry water is uh, very, very heavy. One litre of water is uh, one kilogram in weight. So it's uh, a, a heavy thing to carry. So you wouldn't want to do that in the heat of the day, but yet Jesus finds this woman there in the heat of the day. Uh, and Jesus gets into a conversation with her. To start with, he simply asks her for a drink. And then after he asks her for a drink, they talk further. And Jesus ends up saying to this woman who is shocked that firstly, a man would be talking to a woman in public, which was a definite no-no in Jesus' day. And also that he, being a Jew, would associate in any way whatsoever, let alone talk, to a Samaritan woman. That was completely unusual and uh, certainly was not PC in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they get into this conversation and Jesus touches a raw nerve with her because he exposes what is going on morally in her life. He unearths the fact that uh, she has had five husbands previously and the man that she's currently living with isn't her husband. And she identifies Jesus through this as a prophet, a man who prophetically could speak into the life of somebody else. And that's an incredible gift that a man or a woman can have to speak powerfully in such a way into a person's life. And Jesus did that when he met with this woman in Samaria and she's rather exposed by this I guess a little bit frightened by that but yet there is something within her that realizes that this is no ordinary man this is no ordinary person and she identifies him as being the Messiah the Messiah was the one that the Jews had longed for to come to the world, being the anointed sent one of God to rescue 
their people. And she was able to identify in conversation with Jesus from his words and probably from his actions to his demeanor, the way that he showed love and compassion and mercy toward her as he spoke and gentleness, but yet firmness. She was able to say, could this man be the Messiah? Because she leaves the scene of the well, she goes back to the village in which she lives and she says to the people there, come see a man who has just told me all of the things that I have ever done. Now you can imagine the ears of the men and women in the community would have pricked up when she said that. My goodness, does he know about that man in your life? Does he know about that man in your life? Does he know about that story? And she would have said, yeah, it seems that he did. But yet he spoke to me. And I sensed that he loved me and I realized that he cared for me. And I was blown away that as a Samaritan, Jesus came and spoke to me and he was a Jew. I just can't fully understand it, but yet I know that this man is special. He is unique. So as the story goes on, we're told that the villagers, the community came and discovered for themselves who this Jesus is and many of them we're told believed so as I talk to you today I want to say to you who may feel that Jesus would never associate with you he is willing to associate with you if there are those of you who find hatred in your life and separation like the Jew with the Samaritan. Uh, Maybe you live in a part of the world where there is what is called sectarianism and never the twain will meet, so to speak. The the, the people just don't talk to one another. Uh, We live in different parts of the community or the different parts of the city and we don't go in the same shops. We don't support the same football team or other sporting team we associate with our own but we never ever speak or communicate with the other side well there's good news for you today Uh, Jesus came to break down that divide he came to seek and to save the lost the Bible says and that's a wonderful thing for you and for me so if you feel unloved if you feel isolated if you feel vulnerable If you feel as though everyone's looking at you because of past and even present actions and nobody would want to talk to you or speak to you or come close to you, Jesus, the Bible says, came to seek and to save you, people just like you. The Bible tells us that he came into the world not for the healthy, for those that think that they're good, but for those that are ill, those that are sick, that need to know the hand of one that will heal and forgive and restore. So I want to encourage you today and just reach out to the Lord Jesus because he reaches out to you. At the start of the story in John 4, we're told that Jesus needed to go through this part of Samaria. And many commentators have suggested the reason Jesus, of course, needed to go was for no other reason than to meet with this woman. There are no mistakes with God, I believe. There are no mistakes with the Lord Jesus Christ. He cares for you, he loves you, and he wants you to be part of his family. So however isolated you feel right now, however lonely, however afraid, however fearful it might be about what others might say, take courage and encouragement from this story of this woman all of those years ago who found faith in Jesus, who found that Jesus loved her and he said to her, I have come into the world to give living water that will bubble up within you, that will truly satisfy you. Dear woman, you're not going to need to go running after other men ever again because in me you will find true peace, purpose and satisfaction. And, And that could be you need to hear that today you've been running here there and everywhere may not be relationships for you it could be a career it could be family matters it it, it could be an addiction And, and it just doesn't satisfy whatever you're taking wherever you're going whatever you're watching whatever you're listening to it just doesn't satisfy you Jesus came to come into your life and to my life 
and in, in my life. And he came to seek and to save you. And he came to give to you abundant life. So receive his love and just thank God for the Lord Jesus today. You can know his love. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel just yet, I'd really love that you do that. Click on the bell and you'll receive notifications in time to come. You all take care and I look forward to speaking to you very soon. Take care from myself and Milo. Bye-bye.